Hey, welcome back to my channel, Analyze with Power. So we are talking about part two of the coronavirus dashboard that I shared a few days ago. Um, so what we're going to talk about is the DAX measures that we created. Um, and that's going to be fun. So let's begin. Um, let's go ahead and look at the data first. Oops. So we've got our data model right here. Let's go ahead and fix this because I hadn't done that. Common flu is going to be by itself and all of that. I have status and location. And that's it. We will end up um, hiding a bunch of these fields that we don't use. So let me go ahead and show you what that's supposed to look like after. Like that. So as you can see, a lot of the fields are hidden. And then we have our measures created here. So in creating the measures, let's go ahead and show you. I have different folders. Um, and I can show you how to create that as well. And um, I like to number them. You can choose whatever um, naming conven convention. This is what works for me. I like to keep my titles in one place. Any comments that are um, that depend on measures, let's just this one. I have a few things in there. I have a, a table or a folder for my measures that come from the latest table. I have another one for the measures that come from the master table. I have another one for the measures that come from the influenza and um, any comparison um, measures that I have. So let's go ahead and I hope that's not, um, you know, that you find that useful when doing your models as well. So in here, I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, I want to create the first measure. And if I look at my latest table, I need to sum these values, okay? And that's going to be my cases. So I'm going to call these cases. I'm going to sum values uh, from the latest table, and that's done. And you can format it here. Then we are going to go ahead and get our confirmed. So let's go ahead and say confirmed is equal to, and I want you to calculate my cases, oops, where latest status is equal to confirmed. Oops. Sorry. There you go. Oh, my bad. Now that's better. Okay, so let me show you all the measures that I have. And maybe we can talk about the ones that you may be interested, such as these new cases and new deaths. So the other ones are most just aggregations and then they're being filtered. Um, you know, like confirmed, it's being filtered as confirmed, death and recovered. Um, the mortality rate is just, I'm dividing, oops, this is wrong. <laughs> um, I'm just dividing, you know, my deaths over my confirmed cases. Recovered is the recovered over confirmed. Um, I have a location in here. I'm calling it US locations, but it's actually all locations. Um, and I'm just looking at, hey, give me a distinct count of province and state. Then countries and regions is also a distinct count of country or region. And my active cases is confirmed, take out the death, and take out the recovery. So that's mostly what I'm doing there. Now, to go to the phone part, so how do we get to the this new cases and new deaths? So what I did is I created a measure called prior report cases in prior report death. So in this case, um, of course, I'm pulling up my figures from this master table, which is my cases T for trended. You can name it however you want. So in here, 
basically I'm saying, let's look at the new cases. Oops, uh, prior cases. So basically I'm saying here, okay, first of all, I want a variable that looks at the last date, which is from my latest date report. And then my prior date is my last date minus one. And what I want you to return is, I want you to calculate how many confirmed we had on my prior date. So that's my prior date ca uh, cases. And then I'm gonna click on new cases here so I can show you. So I'm basically saying, get my confirmed, which we know this is coming from the latest report, right? Because it's latest. I'm gonna go ahead and say confirmed. Confirmed, coming from the latest report. And then say, hey, let's go back to it. Just one second, oops. Let's hide this. So I'm not gonna look at, here is basically my confirm minus, minus my prior cases. So I'll do the same with deaths and it's the same thing. The latest and new cases. If you have any questions about using variables and stuff like that, you can let me know. Um, I just wanted to show you the DAX code that I use, um, but variables are pretty, pretty, very, very fun. Okay, so something else that I wanted to do was just compare the coronavirus to the influenza virus. There's many different ways to do it. Um, I really just wanted to look at the mortality rate. There's a lot of factors as well, but I basically wanted to say, hey, okay, how does this compare? Because people look at 4% for the mortality rate and they're like, oh, 4% is not bad versus, but actually the, the influenza is as a 0.1%. So I wanted to say, okay, so how many how many cases do we need to diagnose of the flu for it to result in one death versus how many cases currently with the status of the coronavirus as of it is right now, how many cases of the coronavirus would, result, would, would we need for it to result in one death? So basically I took the... Um, I took one and I divided it by my by my mortality rate. So basically that's what gets me how many cases I need, right? 1040. And then I did the same thing with the coronavirus. I wanted to also put this into a little bit more perspective because, you know, I, for people to be able to understand what that means, because you see 4%, you see 0.1%. So definitely 4% is larger than 0.1%. But what does that really mean? So that's why I included these little comments in here. And of course, this percent as this percent changes, so does the numbers down here. So let's see. Um, I also wanted to, like I mentioned, put it into perspective. So how many cases? So I said, okay, if 12 people get the flu, how many would die at the mortality rate that is was estimated by the CDC? for the 2018-2019 uh, influenza season virus. So that would be two, two, and that's in the United States versus right now at the state that the coronavirus is in, it's actually 82. So that it would um, result in death for 2000, in, in 2000, if we have 2000 cases, 82 would result in death. And of course we know there's, there's so many things that um, impact that. So, um, Let's look at this comment that I have here. Okay, it's actually in the comments. So let's see. Um, so I included some variables so that I can get my information. So my first, I wanted the mortality rate. Um, I also want it um, for both for the influenza and the and the and the coronavirus. And then I wanted to see how many cases do I need, right, uh, for each one of them. And then my comment. So I've got all of my variables in here. You, you need to first define what you want that comment to sound like, right? For me, it was like, okay, hey, did you know that in the United States, the coronavirus mortality rate is my variable, while it is my variable for the seasonal flu, as estimated by the CDC. And then I went ahead and I said, okay, so let me look at my second comment. Oops, let's see, I think it's, 
How did I know where I put it? Let me see where that is. Oops. Maybe I didn't put it in. Oh, here it is. It's this case. Okay. That's the importance of naming your measures correctly. I should have named that better. So then I said, okay, so what does that mean for me? You're saying 1% or 4%, what does, what does it mean? So for me, I said, okay, this is what it means based on these numbers. Of course, there's a lot of factors, but based on the rates that we have right now for the seasonal influenza virus to result in death, it would require at least my variable cases while the coronavirus will require, and that's going to be, Again, my variable cases. So that's how those two comments, um, oops. Those are those two comments in here. So let's go ahead. I'm, I want to show you how to create these folders. I intentionally have a few measures in here that I didn't put in any folder. That closes out. You see this here are not in any folder. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this model in here and i will select them let's go ahead and close them out so i'm going to say new cases i'm going to take this prior report cases and prior report death and i'm actually going to go ahead and move them over to my master uh yeah because that's where i have that information and to do so all i need to do is create a display folder say hey go over to master if i wanted them in a new folder i can literally just same way, select them, and I'm going to say new folder, right? And that's going to go ahead and put it in a new folder now. So that's basically how I did um, the DAX in here. I don't think there's anything else about DAX going on um, that we need to discuss. But if you see anything that I didn't cover, feel free to just send me a message and I'll be more than happy to talk about it with you. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this. And they have a great day. So I'll see you on part three so we can talk about the data visualizations.